Well, here we are, and I'm taking a look at a sun cut knife today, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, it seems like these things are um, branching out besides just being distributed through Amazon. I got this from White Mountain Knives, but I did see them uh, show up on uh, Blade HQ as well. So, yeah, it seems like they are branching out a little bit. Um, so, the reason why I have this guy here um, is because I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison on him because it's very similar. Um, and, uh, outside of the, uh, the button lock, um, they do have a Wii knife that's very similar to this. I think that one's the Speedster. Don't, um, absolutely quote me on that because, uh, I obviously don't own it, but I do believe that's the one that, uh, I did see that, uh, reminds me quite a bit of these things. But anyway, this is the, uh, Civivi uh conspirator i have a uh titanium clip on this guy here that i've uh recently uh kind of put on there still it's fairly solid but uh still kind of has a little bit of that um kind of creaky thing that um civivis uh that i've noticed uh between that and um another one of these that wasn't purple just a uh, standard steel that i had on the chevalier kind of tells me it's much more the mounting rather than probably just the clip itself that uh, ends up bothering me but that being said yeah we do have um the uh the standard pocket clip here this is basically the same thing that comes standard on this one before i swapped it out um so that's basically about the same we have the uh the micarta here um and both of them do have a uh, chamfering on the edges obviously these are uh, slightly different colors this is green and this is black um, but yeah, it just has a little bit of a chamfer there rather than a, a, a full knockdown kind of a area there. Obviously that's one little, um, place that they've, uh, cut some costs and stuff like that. Uh, uh but yeah, this is, um, the, uh, since I hadn't said it already, it's the sexy, um, I, I think it's, I guess some people might pronounce it sexy. Uh, but yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't know necessarily if it was named after the, uh, the town in Texas. It's kind of, uh, well known for that, even though it's not a very large town. Uh, but I suppose also in, um, Germanic, it, uh, translates to Saxon, which, you know, that's one of the Germanic tribes. I don't know, but, uh, hey, at least it's got a name. It's not, um, yb14 pxr or something like that so uh at least it's uh easy enough to uh uh remember so yeah here we are next to the uh conspirator and we can see it's just a little tiny bit smaller um the blade length and uh the handle and um i do actually feel that with my um with my hands here it does have a, a bit of a finger groove where this one doesn't so that's kind of neat but it does feel just a little bit shorter. Uh, that clip, by the way, you can hear that. Yeah, as I'm squeezing it, uh, you can definitely hear and feel that uh, pocket clip kind of walk around a little bit. Same thing happens on uh, this guy, so I don't really want to uh, you know, put too much attention on there. Um, the other difference here being that, uh, this one has a thumb stud, whereas the conspirator doesn't. And I honestly don't remember with the, uh, the speedster. I think it might have had a thumb stud on it. I don't know. Either way, that's a titanium frame lock, whatever. Both of these are button locks with micarta. Um, so fairly similar, uh, but yeah, they are just a little bit, uh, smaller. This one has a, a little bit larger of a, uh, sharpening choil on there but both of them end up working out all right but yeah you can see it is a little bit smaller there um and i absolutely have uh, grown to love the uh the conspirator uh but it does seem to accommodate my uh larger hands so if um you know you have uh standard hands or something like that you probably will prefer that or you know at least not have a uh, personal preference between them. Um, something that I do like on it is uh, we don't have um, proud liners or shadow box liners, whereas we do on um, this here conspirator. Uh, but the blade shape's fairly similar. 
Looks like this one may drop just a little bit more dramatically towards the front. Uh, the blade steels are obviously going to be different. Um, this is uh, Nitro V on this guy in particular. Yeah, you can see him kind of glowing way down there in the bottom. Yeah, it's upside down, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, and this is, of course, it's Sencut, so we have 9CR 18MOV, which is uh, basically like a 440C kind of equivalent. Uh, which is interesting. They they do have another new knife uh, that came out alongside these guys uh, that uses uh, 10CR 15MOV, which is kind of like their uh, their VG10 equivalent. Their, I'm meaning like... Um, the Chinese uh, generic manufacturing process sort of thing. Not necessarily that uh, it's an exclusive deal to them or anything like that. But I do like to see that um, 10CR is a pretty decent steel. I think Civivi has used it on one or two knives in the past as well. But All right. Um, yeah, so this is uh, going to be a little bit different. It's still super, super nice and slicey. Um, same kind of profile that you would get out of uh, pretty much any other kind of Civivi knife. So... That's quite nice. Um, when I did the uh, the sharpness test out of the box on this, it got just at 200, which uh, is pretty good in the middle of the pack. It's not, you know, absolutely crazy, ridiculous razor sharp, but still did a pretty decent job. And it seemed like it was sharpened to eh, maybe about 23 degrees. I've just finished uh, reprofiling it down to um, 20, which... Uh, didn't take a whole lot of effort because 9CR is fairly easy to uh, sharpen. Um, something that I have noticed just a little bit, but I can't really count it against this guy yet, is uh, the action on him is a little bit more stiff. It still can kind of drop shut there, but with that flipper tab, uh, you do have to, at least currently, uh, really give it uh, a bit more gusto than uh, you technically would for... Uh, this guy, which you can easily fail, but seems to deploy quite easily uh, almost all the time. However, there's two things uh, against that. One, I have, uh, of course, disassembled this guy and um, tuned him up and everything like that. And I have not done that on this one yet. And it also has uh, a blade coating on there, which can hamper things a little bit. So I do think that this thing can get a little bit better action. Obviously, closing it's all not, not all that much of a uh, big deal, and of course, you have plenty of power for the uh, the thumb stud. It's uh, yeah, the uh, the back flipper that uh, you end up at least currently without doing any of the tune up. You need to uh, consciously put a little bit more force into that. But um, yeah, it's it's not a bad little blade uh, overall. Uh, like I said, it is a little bit smaller here than uh, than the conspirator. But fairly similar, except for it has a thumb stud, so I guess it's uh, a little bit closer to the uh, the Scepter um, that was another Sencut model there. Uh, but kind of a hybrid between them. Uh, and it works out alright. Uh, for me, I think I, I do personally prefer the, uh, the Fuller there for, um, you know, I do, I like to just uh, kind of open up my uh, index finger and that thing works out really, really well on this. And you technically probably could even do that on this one. You have the traction for it to, uh, to do that. But uh, the thumb stud kind of does get in the way a little bit on it. But hey, I also like a good thumb stud and that works out all right. Uh, we don't really have any blade play. I don't really have any troubles with uh, chamfering going on on the, uh, the plunge lock or button lock, whatever you want to call that. And uh, the blade there, so this thing isn't going to uh, come disengaged on you like uh, has happened on a um, six-leaf knife that uh, just wasn't designed properly, I suppose. Uh, but uh, that's another video, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I would absolutely love if this conspirator didn't have those... Um, Proud liners. Uh, the reason why it doesn't necessarily bother me all that much here is because of the jimping and the way that you end up holding the knife. Um, I'm not interfacing so much with those liners on the top there. I still am on the bottom, but it bothers me much less than if I'm actually putting the force on it. Whereas, yeah. So that kind of uh, gets a little bit of a pass for me. However, yeah, the prices are going to be a little bit different on these things. Um, I think these uh, these guys go for about 45 bucks. 
And uh, the conspirator is uh, uh, somewhere in the 70s, I think. So, yes, it is going to be a little bit more of a, an expensive knife. That being said, you do get a little bit more of it, something that I think is just a little tiny bit more comfortable. And, of course, Nitro V is a fantastic fine-grained steel. Um, it's actually an American-made steel made out of a, a company in uh, New Jersey, but it's essentially... Uh, a modification or variant of AEBL, which uh, you've probably seen uh, a lot of uh, custom makers like to uh, work with because, well, it's not a powder metallurgy steel, um, holds an edge pretty darn good, and uh, yeah, it's uh, easy to machine and work with and stuff like that. Uh, has about the same kind of um, characteristics as 14C28N, which Civivi also uses interchangeably on some other blades. Uh, it depends on the model, of course. You know, one uses one, one uses the other. But uh, in practice, they both seem to uh, act about the same for me. Uh, Sencut does a decent job on their uh, 9CR. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, absolutely um, fantastic steel. Like I said, it's basically a 440C equivalent. So, I mean, that was a uh, super steel, you know, maybe um, in the mid-80s or something like that. You know, now it's uh, it's a bit dated, but uh, for a budget model, um, you know, certainly makes sense. I, like I said uh, earlier, probably would have preferred them to go with the, uh, the 10CR15 MOV just because it does jump up that um, uh, edge retention uh, capabilities on it uh, quite a bit over it. I don't know necessarily what coating they got on here, but they did do a little bit of a uh, tumble on here. You can probably see just a little bit of a line there. I actually um, had a bit of uh, painter's tape on this thing while I was doing the sharpening just so I wouldn't uh, scratch up any of the, uh, the, the finish on there. Uh, but uh, my best guess is it's a PVD coating. So, you know, not just that uh, cheap paint stuff that... Um, some companies have done. Uh, unfortunately, Cold Steel was really into that for a while. <laughs> but uh, I do believe they don't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, a lot of their popular knives used to. Either way, I've uh, apparently gone off on a whole bunch of tangents here. But, alrighty. Yeah, so I've uh, compared it to the uh, Conspirator here. Uh, how about if I do a couple other uh, blade size comparisons? Uh, here we are with the Bug Out. It's a little bit bigger than that. And there's the, uh, the Benchmade 940, which uh, has some similar, um, at least length things, as far as the, uh, the handle and the blade goes. Uh, let's see. Spider Go PM2. Let's go ahead with that. That's, uh, yeah, definitely a uh, longer handle on the PM2, but uh, that's pretty much expected for uh, most things. Uh, having to do with the, uh, the PM2. It just has a longer handle than a lot of other ones. There we go with the Endura 4. I don't know. That's necessarily um, super important for people these days, but uh, <laughs> it is for me. So, yeah, uh, I do definitely have the, uh, the measurements, uh, of course, down there. And the, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll actually use a... Uh, my calipers on this instead if I could properly locate where I put them. Ah, there we are. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's go for freedom units. At least to start with here. <laughs> Yeah, so just a smidge under 3.4 inches, where the uh, the conspirator is just a smidge over uh, 3.5. Uh, that ends up being 87.87.5 millimeters, somewhere right under there. So, yeah, it works out all right. Like I said, uh, the, the pocket clip does bother me a little bit, but that's more or less a, um, at this point, a, uh, a brand um, feature or flaw or, you know, uh, just uh, idiosyncrasy or whatever you want to call that. Um, so I don't necessarily have any problems with there. The micarta, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. Seems like it's probably using the same kind of micarta that um, Civivi ends up using for it. 
This is um, a bit of a rougher finish on here. So they've um, basically used a, a lower grit uh, finish on there. And that helps with uh, some grit. It is nice. It uh, doesn't quite feel like um, some flax fiber uh, uh, micarta that I've seen from uh, some other companies like uh, Free Tiger and stuff like that. This does seem like it's just a standard canvas. Not that that's uh, particularly um, important, but uh, it kind of can be if you have some um, fairly rough textured micarta like this. But yeah, this is, uh, this definitely just feels like standard canvas micarta. Nice, I don't really have any problems with that. Like I said, I don't have any problems with the lockup either. Um, yep, just uh, I need to work on that action a little bit because it's um, just a bit stiff out of the box there. Just looking to see if it has a uh, stop pin in there, and it basically just looks like it's part of the uh, the button lock there. So okay. Oh well, nope. I'm I'm a moron, and there it is, just right up front there. It just curves around it um, instead of uh, landing directly on it. So okay, yep. Forget what I said there. <laughs> But, uh, okay, yeah, about the only other thing I can cover here is uh, you can swap that clip to the other side. Um, you just have to uh, remember where the screws actually go. Uh, I honestly don't know at the moment if uh, the top ones are going to be longer, but that seems to be the case more or less often because it'll attach to the, uh, the barrel spacer there. And, of course, this has that little lanyard thing there. And they... they Kind of concave that a little bit uh, to make it a little easier for looping and stuff like that. But, yeah, that's uh, very, very similar to what we have on the Conspirator here. This one's a little bit further out towards the end of the, the liner, but, yeah, same exact thing. Same barrel spacers, but uh, this is more matte rather than a uh, polished black hardware. But, yeah, there you go. Um, about the only other difference I think I can see is, uh, the Civibi pivot usually has that little, uh, triangle cut out so that it will, uh, align that up there. And, uh, the send cut ones don't bother doing their own, um, pivot collar. So, hey, there's that. But, uh, otherwise they are very, very similar. If you were interested in, uh, picking up a conspirator or some, uh, or something like that, but uh, didn't quite have the uh, 70, I don't remember if it was 73, 75, 77, somewhere around in there. Uh, but you are looking for a little bit more affordable version of it. This is a, it's a pretty good place to go. Um, I probably should have looked beforehand. I do believe that all of the, uh, the variants of um, this uh, Saxe here is... Uh, using a uh, coating on the blade. I don't think you can get it in a uh, in an uncoated variant. So I suppose keep that in mind, whether that's something that you uh, actively look for or something that you um, don't like. So I typically prefer not having a coated blade when I have an option. Well, that being said, as long as they're all right, um, and of course, as long as you as a uh, collector or a person are all right knowing that uh, once these things get marred, there's no fixing it unless you strip it all off and put a different finish on there. So, <laughs> but yeah, for a, uh, for a decent budget knife, um, these things uh, aren't too bad. Still, um, I've said it before in the past, uh, these, uh, these send cut guys, um, it's obviously the uh, the even um, cheaper uh, version or you know brand of uh, we than uh, than Civivis are, and I thought when they were first coming out that they were going to uh, compete with some of the um, the uh, the the companies that were kind of uh, undercutting them uh, in their Civivi range, um, that being like Gonzo and uh, Free Tiger and uh, I guess to some extent Petrified Fish, but uh, they're they're certainly uh, bumping up um, quality steels and a little bit of their price these days. Um, so, yeah, that is something to uh, keep into consideration. But at least, you know, now um, 
there's more distribution of these guys rather than just Amazon. So they're at least available from the same people who actually made Wii and Civivi, you know, popular amongst the knife community. <laughs> so that is nice to see. Um, and you know, the, it's not a terrible price at 45 bucks, but still, you can probably get just a little bit better, uh, as far as, um, as far as the price goes for something like this, uh, similar from some of the other companies out there, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, this one does not have a designer associated with it to my knowledge. Uh, but that's kind of by design as far as, uh, all the sin cut knives. Um, that is part of what separates them from uh, Civivi and Wii, is um, saving on the licensing costs from actually paying a uh, well-known designer for their particular designs. That being said, though, I do believe the uh, conspirator here and the Chevalier, uh, which I got basically around the same time, uh, are also in-house designs. They don't have an uh, external designer uh, associated with it. But still, there you go. All right. This probably went on just a little bit longer than it really needed to between it, but uh, hey, there you go. Um, still, as far as I'm concerned, if you have that little bit of extra cash, I would say go for the Conspirator. I do like the action on it uh, just a little bit more. Um, I do uh, like the, uh, the deployment options and stuff like that. And of course, I really do prefer uh, the Nitro V blade steel that we have going on here. So there you go. But... Um, yeah, don't really think I have anything else. Uh, I will have the uh, the measurements for this, of course, down in the description as always, since I didn't fully cover that in the video. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, since I have have done basically a video on these guys and uh, Civivi's other button locks, um, it's basically identical in here. So there's no super, super need to uh, go on the inside here. But I will at least shine a light in here to... Uh, depict that this thing does have um skeletonization going on and uh yeah uh civivi and uh we do like to use a lot of uh, triangular shapes which uh that definitely makes sense for um stability and um machining and all that stuff so it's done pretty much right and these guys weigh basically right around the same so yeah there you go that's basically just a little bit of a a cheaper conspirator with um yeah, a bit of a lesser blade, but uh, otherwise, very, very similar, just a little tiny bit smaller. All right. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. And subscribe, please.